This is the ASUS Tuf Gaming AX5400 Wi-Fi 6 wireless router. And this is going to be the next wireless router that I'm going to use. So I thought, hey, why not do a review about this? So the thing is, if you are in the market looking for a decent quality Wi-Fi 6 router, then you might find this video helpful. Hey guys, Tech Guy Charlie here and welcome back to the channel. Now before we proceed any further, I just want to say that if you enjoy watching these kind of videos, support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. Alright, so let's get back to the review. So now that we have the router unboxed, let's see what ASUS bundles inside the box. So first off, you've got the router itself. Man, this thing looks like a freaking spaceship. Next, you've got the power brick with a couple of adapter pins. If you are wondering, this is a 12 volt 2.5 amps 30 watt adapter, so pretty beefy. Next up is the LAN cable and some additional documentation. And that is pretty much all there is to it. Now coming to the build quality and the design, well it kinda looks like a freaking spaceship. Of course it's gotta have the gamery aesthetics to it since this is from their tough gaming lineup. And this is a pretty decent sized router. So space is something that you will have to keep in mind because its footprint is pretty big. This is more of a concern if you decide to keep the router on your table. And it's got 6 non-removable antennas. So now let's take a look at the back. So it's got 4 gigabit LAN ports. One of these is dedicated for your gaming PC and a WAN port which also supports gigabit speeds. So you can take full advantage if you have a gigabit internet connection. And finally, a USB 3 port. That's gonna come in very handy for connecting hard drives. Now on the front we've got these status LEDs, sadly a lot of new routers have ditched these but fortunately this one still has them and this was one of the reasons why I picked this particular router. And of course the Tough Gaming logo lights up, it's got an RGB LED which you can control through the router's web interface. And lastly this is how the underside looks like, unfortunately there are no slots for mounting this on the wall so you will have to keep it on a flat surface. And I've got mine set up on the top of a cabinet in the middle of the house because this location is the best for strong and consistent Wi-Fi signal across the entire house. And setting the router up was super easy. After connecting all the cables and powering the router up, just log in into the router's web interface and follow the instructions to get everything up and running. I gotta say, it was extremely easy to set the router up. Now I'm not going to show you the entire setup process because it is pretty self-explanatory. And once you are done, you should see this screen. Now you might have noticed it still says that the internet connection is not available. This is because sometimes you might have to call your ISP to update the MAC address on their end or you can just copy the MAC address over from your previous router. That is exactly what I did and got the internet up and running in less than 5 minutes. Alright, so now that the router is up and running, let's do some tests. Now the first thing I want to check is the range because this is a powerful router. It is built for medium to large homes. So this should have a pretty good range that should eliminate any dead zones in your home. So I am in the room which is quite far away from the router and it is also separated by a wall. And you will notice that the wireless signal is really weak and eventually the phone will get disconnected. And there you go, just switched over to mobile data. And the router I was using is the Netgear JNR3000. It is a good router but its range is not enough for a large home. Now switching over to the new ASUS AX5400. The phone remains connected to the Wi-Fi network and not only that, we can also stream 4K videos from our PC on two devices in this room simultaneously without having any issues. And we are connected to the 5GHz network on both of these devices. Now the signal strength is not 100% especially on the laptop, but now the devices remain connected. And we are connected to the 5 GHz network and as you might know, 5 GHz Wi-Fi networks have issues penetrating walls. And not to mention we are quite far away from the router and there is a concrete wall that separates this room. Now the 2.4 GHz range is so good that the phone is able to stay connected to the wireless network even when I'm downstairs walking on the street. And not only that, I was also able to stream a 4K video on YouTube without any buffering and I am quite far away from the router. 
So the range is really good, especially when it comes to the 2.4 GHz network. So I am very happy to see how this new router is performing. Now unfortunately I don't have the fastest internet connection, it is only a 100 megabit connection and we are able to completely saturate the speed. And this is in the room where we had the dead Wi-Fi zone. So even in the worst case scenario we are able to completely utilize the speed of our internet connection. So to really test out the speed of the wireless network, we are going to copy a large video file from our desktop onto the laptop. And our desktop is connected to the router's gigabit LAN port. So that should give us a rough idea of how fast the wireless network really is. And I know this is not the most scientific way of doing the test, but hey. Okay, so right now the laptop is connected to the 5 GHz network. I am in my room and the router is right outside that door on top of the cabinet. So we are not that far away from the router. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the file from the network folder and as you can see we are getting about 80 to 85 megabytes per second worth of file transfer speed. It does fluctuate a bit but more or less it's quite consistent. And keep in mind the source and the destination drives are SSDs so there should be no read write speed bottleneck here. And we are done. That barely took about a minute to copy 7 gig worth of files over Wi-Fi. Switching over to the 2.4 GHz network, you can see things are a lot slower. We're getting a speed of about 10 to 11 megabytes per second which is a lot slower compared to the 80 megabytes per second we were getting on the 5 GHz network. Part of the problem might be that I've got 40 plus devices connected to the 2.4 GHz network. Most of them are IoT devices such as smart LED lamps. But yeah, generally 2.4 GHz will be slower than the 5 GHz network. So this is why I recommend using the 5 GHz network whenever you can. Now I am in the same room as the router. So there are no walls or doors separating the laptop and the router. And as you can see, we are getting full gigabit speeds over Wi-Fi. That is impressive to say the least. Now I am guessing it can go faster because we are maxing out the gigabit LAN port where the desktop is plugged in. But nonetheless, 100 megabytes per second on a wireless network is impressive. Switching over to the 2.4 gigahertz network, the speeds drop to about 11 to 12 megabytes per second. So finally we are in the room where we had the dead Wi-Fi zone and on the 5 GHz network we are getting about 45 to 50 megabytes per second on average. This is actually pretty okay because on the previous router we could not even stay connected to the wireless network. And not to mention I'm also watching YouTube on my phone just to see if we can stream a 4K video while transferring files on our computer. The answer is yes we can. There is more than enough bandwidth available with the router. Now the 2.4 GHz speed test in this room kind of took me by surprise. We ended up getting about 16 to 17 megabytes per second worth of file transfer speed, which is even faster than what we got when we were sitting in the same room as the router. I'm guessing because in this room there is less RF interference. I mean there are no gadgets in this room and the only light source is a strip of LED lights. So less RF interference the better. Now I am not much of a gamer but sometimes I do play Dota 2 and we are getting about 75 to 77 millisecond worth of ping in my room and this is with the doors closed playing over the 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection. And obviously there is no packet loss or any lags that I can feel. Everything is running butter smooth. And if you are wondering yes I'm holding the camera with one hand while playing the game. And we get about the same ping with no packet loss while sitting in the same room as the router. Okay, maybe slightly lower ping but it is not something I can feel while playing the game. And these numbers are about the same while playing on the desktop which is connected to the router via ethernet. So I have not noticed any difference in the latency playing over a wired connection versus 5 GHz wireless. So rock solid ping with no packet loss while gaming over Wi-Fi. So online gaming over Wi-Fi on this router is definitely possible. 
And just for the fun of it, I also tried gaming in the room which used to have the dead wireless zone and we get a slightly higher ping at about 85 but no packet loss or any random spikes. And keep in mind, this is with really low wireless signal. I mean, we could not even stay connected with the previous wireless router, let alone gaming. So this is impressive to say the least. Now remember I told you guys that this router has a USB 3 port on its back. You can actually use this in many ways like set up your own cloud, printer server or even use a 3G or a 4G dongle for internet. But what I like to do is plug in a USB hard drive and use it as an FTP and a media server. This allows us to upload files directly to the hard drive using a PC and then view them on a smart device such as a smart TV. And you don't need any additional software for this, everything is handled by the router itself. Awesome right? Now the configuration is super easy, just log in into the router's web interface, head on over to the USB application tab and then click on server center. Here in this menu turn on the UPnP server option. This enables the DLNA media server. You also might want to head over to the FTP share option and then enable the FTP server if you want to upload and download files to the hard drive which is plugged in into the router. And I've also disabled the WAN access to the FTP server since I don't want anyone from outside my local area network to access my personal stuff that is on the hard drive. Lastly, for FTP, the router uses the username and password that you have set for logging into the router's web interface. And from here, you can also change the permissions for individual folders. So that is pretty much it. Now to upload or download files to the hard drive via FTP, you will need to use an FTP client. I prefer FileZilla because it is free. So once you connect to the router, by the way if you are connecting the first time it will ask for username and password. So once you connect, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping files. And the program will upload the files directly to the hard drive which is connected to the router. Once the files are uploaded, you can play them on your smart TV. And it can be anything, music, photo or video. So this is probably one of the most useful features of this router. Asus also has a mobile app that gives you full control over your router via your smartphone. So you can check the status of the router, control the RGB LED, check the devices that are currently connected to the router, and pretty much change and configure every setting that is imaginable. So you don't even need to log in into the web interface from your PC. You can have full control over the router right from your smartphone, which is very convenient. And this is the router's web interface. Now I'm not going to show you each and every one of these features since the UI is pretty much self-explanatory. And there are many videos on YouTube showing this exact same thing. But I do want to go over a couple of important features. Number one. This router supports the new WPA3 authentication which is more secure compared to the old WPA2. But you gotta keep in mind that it is not backwards compatible so older devices will not be able to connect to the router if you select the WPA3 authentication option. So this is why I still have the WPA2 option enabled on the 2.4 GHz network. Next, this router also supports ASUS AI Mesh. Basically, this lets you connect multiple ASUS routers to extend the range of your wireless network. Very useful for large homes. And this being a gaming router has something called Game Boost. This gives priority to your gaming devices. Now you will have to add them manually but yeah, you get the idea. This router also has something called OpenNet which supposedly reduces latency in online games. I tried this with Dota 2 and no, it did not make any difference. I still get about the exact same ping like I used to. And lastly, this router also supports OpenVPN and VPN Fusion which allows you to connect to multiple VPN servers simultaneously and also assign your clients different VPN tunnels. I personally haven't tried this feature so I cannot say how it works. And lastly, you can also flash ASUS WRT Merlin on the AX5400 if you want more features. So overall, this is a pretty awesome router with a lot of features. Now this might be an important feature to some of you guys. So here's the thing. 
you can actually switch off all of the LEDs on the router including the activity LEDs. This can be extremely useful if you want the room to be completely dark at night. I mean these LEDs are quite bright so kind of makes sense to switch them off at night if you have this thing in your bedroom. The temperatures are also okay, doesn't get too hot. It runs at about 38 degrees celsius which is alright and it's been on for more than a month now. So these temperatures are okay. Alright, so after a lot of research and actually using the router for more than a month, I feel that this is the best mid-range Wi-Fi 6 router that you can currently get in the market. So this router has excellent range and not only that, it's also got really fast Wi-Fi speed that rivals Gigabit LAN. That is awesome. And along with all of this, it's also got tons of useful features such as a built-in media server. So if you're in the market looking for an awesome Wi-Fi 6 router, then you might want to consider the ASUS Tough Gaming AX5400. Now, if you have any questions about this particular router, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and answer them. Alright, so that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. And if you have found this video to be helpful, make sure to hit the like button. And lastly, subscribe to the channel for more content. Okay, so I will see you guys in the next video.